Now, I'm willing to believe, but I just need some questions answered. The strap. Why, why does he have... It obviously doesn't have anything to do with the kerosene. I don't understand it. The life vest would not save him. He's got that shit strapped to his feet. He would sink right to the bottom. I don't understand that. You know, it's not even big enough to do anything. But, okay, we'll give it... You know, we'll say... We'll let it go. But this, this is an interview. And right in the middle of him talking... They do a cut. Why? Why did they, Why wouldn't they just play the whole interview? That doesn't make sense to edit something like this. Okay, watch the guy in the background with the hat. Why? Why did they have that edit there? It made it, you know, I just, you know, they made it look like it was seamless, but we know it wasn't. This right here, a guy just appears as Frankie's standing up like that. I mean, that's just weird. That's just such a weird edit. It just doesn't make any sense. And the fact that everybody is filming with their, their, their phone cameras, um, but that's all the footage we see is like the, the phone camera footage. Because who's ever filming this right now is not a professional photographer, or journalist, or anything like that. It was not well done at all. So I don't know what camera that was off of. And they wouldn't have filmed the other cameras in the scene. Okay, so this is the Guinness Book of World Records video or whatever that they released. Okay, so he comes in, he lands. Right there, he broke the record. Okay? That's it. He broke the record right there. Everyone's cheering for him. Right? Okay, so he's like, okay, I'm going to do one more. Just, you know, do a little roundabout and show everybody. Okay, so he goes up, and it looks really convincing. I mean, I, I want to believe it. You know, with how many videos there are, it looks very convincing. Um, but I also understand how marketing campaigns work, and, um, you know, this is not beyond the scope of a marketing campaign. Okay, now he comes back in for the landing. So this is the second time he just went and did his little uh, victory lap. Because he's not getting it right here, because he just got it a second ago. Okay, so, I mean, so that's that. That's how, that's how they played it off. You know, that was the Guinness Book of World Records uh, video for them anyway, Flyboard Air, but Fabio Productions, which... I don't know who they are, but they are small, obviously very small, not very skilled. But now the problem is, is that on their, when they were broadcasting live, supposedly broadcasting live, um, I went to go to watch the channel. Someone sent a, a link for me. I was like, all right. So I went to go watch it and I set my screen recorder on and everything and uh, to watch it go live. But as soon as I got there, I knew instantly, <coughs> excuse me, that it wasn't live because they do not have the live stream app. It's not on their Facebook page. So that's something that's, you know, that just, you have to have that for, because I, in fact, do have it. Um, so I can broadcast live. These guys did not have the live streaming, the application that you need to broadcast live. Because we can search every live stream through the live stream app. So anyone that has a live stream, that's how you can go and search it and you can watch it live. But these guys don't have it. They, in fact, their videos were just straight up, just posted videos. You can check the metadata on them. They're just posted. They weren't live streamed. All right, so I'm on the Facebook page where they had uh, the live video. Okay, supposedly. So we can go and prove it right now 100%. So we are, see, I can uh, check the data on anything in here. Right there, we go to the video. We check the metadata. Auto, preload. It's, it, didn't, it wasn't streaming live. So 100%, I'm right about that. So I just want to know what the, what, what the deal is. Why did they bother lying? There's, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You know, they should have just, just been straight up. That's Other than that, it just makes everything more fucking confusing. You know, I mean, there's there's no doubt about this. There, okay, that's I'm 100% right on that. You can see it right there. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I mean, like, you know, what's... It doesn't make how does it make sense? It doesn't. Um, so they, I mean, they weren't being honest about that. Why? Why did they lie about that? It doesn't make any sense. So 
you know, basically the video could have been produced at any time, at any day, and we wouldn't know the difference because just checking the, the, the metadata just says it's, it's not a live stream. So we know that it was just a posted video. But why did they lie about that? If it's if it's legitimate, why do they have so many things that just don't make any sense? You know, I mean, most of it does. But the little things that don't just say, OK, well, you know, if it doesn't all make sense, then it's not legitimate. Um, if it if it was all if it, everything made sense, then it would be considered legitimate. We wouldn't be questioning it. But why do so many people question it? Why? Are, why does every website that puts out an article by them question whether or not it's a hoax? Because when you do something, if you make a new product, they don't question whether or not it's a hoax unless it's you know completely unbelievable. And then that's when they do. And um, it's known that companies have been using the hoverboard thing <laughs> uh, to promote themselves for the past couple of years now. Uh, it's a very popular thing to do. So you can't, you know, it's uh, how could you not be skeptical of it? Especially with all the edits and even the, the articles, people are giving me links to articles where the articles are questioning whether or not it's real. Why? You know, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Now, if this was the lot, this is the live video where, you know, when you first watch it, this is the very first video that they um, that got uploaded. So during the live event, so since the supposed live event, this was the very, very first video. The very first one. So if this was live, then this is the him getting breaking the record, and um, that's it. Okay, that was that was it. This was his because this was live. So no other shot could have came first, right? Right, because it was live. So this is him winning it, breaking the record. So this is when they first broadcasted live to us. Okay, so what I don't understand is um, if this was the live event, if this was first, the guy hosting the camera, the guy who's um, hosting him right there, why did he come on camera and say, here we go, here we go, it's live, here we go, he's coming. Why did he do that if he had already landed once before? Does that make any sense? I mean, he had, it's like if he had already landed, got up and done a little victory lap. Why <laughs> did the guy pretend like he, or act like that was when he first landed? You know, why did he act like that was the live shot? Why didn't he say, oh, you guys, he already landed once. This is just his victory lap. He got in front of the camera like, yeah, this guy, he just did it. But that wouldn't have that's not true apparently it's not because of the other videos but that was supposed to be the live one so that should have been first that doesn't make the slightest bit of sense i mean if someone please explain it to me i'm willing to believe it if someone can explain it to me because without that i'm just like i'm just lost there's one that's not edited but right here i mean look he lands and he's pointing that way and this one he lands he's pointing this way now everyone's cheering like he just got done like making the record and then he gets back up and he takes back off but in this one he just sits there it just it doesn't make any sense it looks like there's you know maybe several different takes um edited in like you know just added up to the diff different clips like they might have filmed this a couple different times is what it looks like i just don't understand how how that could be possible if we were watching it live then how does everyone re react like that okay so okay so this footage with the check mark as you know already know that's the first footage they've aired that's the live one this is supposed to be the live shot okay so this is how he lands and it's done and he he won the he broke the record or whatever so because the guy already came on camera it's going he's coming right now he's coming right now and then he comes and lands and even afterwards he acts like hey he just won now look it doesn't make any sense okay so now he lands this way that means the other video he had already it basically proves that he had already landed once before and then got off the and then flew around again and then landed again 
Well, I mean, so, you know, he's just like, they broadcasted live and they're like, oh, yeah, we're sorry. We didn't catch the original landing. Like, um, you missed, we missed that. Uh, we're sorry. Or, I mean, nothing. It doesn't make any sense. I, I just, I don't understand it at all. <laughs> this guy comes straight on camera like, hey, yeah, you know, here he comes. Here he comes. You know, like, but if he, no, he doesn't. He already landed once and he got up and flew around again and then landed again. And that's when you said, oh, here he comes. Here he comes. But it's like you already knew he landed once. Why wouldn't you have showed that first if that was a live event and it was a Guinness World Record? Doesn't that make any sense to anybody? I mean, does, I mean, how, how does that, how is that credible? How is that believable? It's hard for me to believe. If someone can explain what the problem is and how, you know, how it could be so confusing or messed up, I would love to hear it. I'm willing to back up the that the hoverboard is real if someone could please explain that to me. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you know, they just won the Guinness Book of World Records, so, you know, that should say something for you. <laughs> In fact, it, it doesn't. In fact, it, that's what makes me really question it. Um... Because that's, um, I don't know how many people know this, but they are also a marketing brand and, um, companies use Guinness Book of World Records to market their brands all the time. Now, if you go to their business solutions, you can find out all the information on it. They, um, they charge you for basically, um, uh, anything you, you, using their name. If you want to file an application with them, um, to get it like, to go through fast track to get it through them because they like the average application takes 12 weeks to review um but if you pay them uh between 450 and 750 dollars they'll review it within a week um also the uh they have a, a a team that you can go and they will put together for you to help you um, sell your product. See brand awareness, sponsorship activation. I mean, you know, the unique flexibility of our records means that we can develop campaigns firmly aligned to your objectives. They have the power to engage millions on social media, create content that people can't resist watching, and to deliver headline grabbing events. You see, they this is what they this is what they do. So um, they help promote companies because they have a world recognized um, name. So that's that's really what they do now. So I don't take anything they say say seriously because you can pay them for it and they will back you up. You get it? Like your record doesn't have to be a legitimate record. They will just make it up for you. They don't, they don't give a shit. Um, the fact that, um, the fact that they had a judge at the, at the, uh, flyboard challenge or whatever, the fact that the judge was there lets me know they put a lot of money into it because a judge from Guinness Book of World Records, period, no matter what cost between, uh, you know, zero and $50,000 euros or 50,000 euros I mean okay so um, quite a bit of money to have a judge out there so um, it's usually you don't you don't pay that kind of money when you're just trying to break a record for yourself you pay that kind of money to market something to fucking get recognition of something now an actual live event by Guinness World Records if this if it was a real live event would have costed between a hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand euros. I know it sounds crazy, but I promise you it's the truth. So I don't take anything that they say seriously because they're, you know, I mean, look, they, you know, how many balls, how many tennis balls can you catch with a boxing glove in one minute? That's not a record. It's a way to promote the company. They do it with all kinds of companies. They, they even tell, they I mean, they blatantly say it in all their stuff. So all you have to do is go and read all their business solutions. They have these weird experimental marketings where they help with viral campaigns. And I mean, it's just, it's, that's just what they do. Don't, you don't have to trust me. Just go to their website and look at it. It's, it's all right there. Um, so, you know, I just, it's hard for me to trust all that. You know, um, you know, overall event design, <laughs> record selection, testing, uh, adjudication at the event, licensing of Guinness World Records, wordmark and logos. You know, that's, that's all this stuff is just, I'm, you know, that's, um, they help market. You see what I'm saying? That's what they, that's what they do. So I don't, I don't take anything they say seriously. If you want a Guinness Book World Records, so what? I mean, there are places in, um, like in India or whatever, or in Saudi Arabia or wherever, or the other side of the world where they have events that, um, uh, you just go there and they constantly have Guinness Book of World Records events. You just can go there and participate anytime and win a Guinness Book. It's like a carnival. 
and you win, um, you know, Guinness World Records, you know, by how much sand you can sift in half an hour or how many beads you can thread. It's just like it's it's so ridiculous that, you know, see like this right here, authenticate uh, Guinness, you know, to have uh, uh, an authentic event or whatever and have a, a judge there. They, you have to pay for it. See, this is this website is a place where you go for when you're trying to get exposure. They will help you find different what, different types of media to help you. So all the big um, marketing people, all the people who do all the media and uh, try to get products notice and stuff, they, you can go on here and find all of their information. And so this is uh, like uh, their information on Guinness World Records doing it. So I mean, they have some, um, uh, <laughs> you know, like ridiculous stuff. I mean, like look. Um, at the uh um at the benefits right down here um you know maximum awareness engagement media coverage pre and post with a two week license of the official attempt logo and a 24 hour license of the official record ho holder logo well we know for a fact that they used both of those for that time period you know they had the uh, logo they were using it they for exactly two weeks that's exactly what they that's exactly what we did we all know that so um and then the record holder logo was used for 24 hours so, so it doesn't make any sense that um you know that if this was legitimate why would they pay all this money just to, you know unless they're trying to get recognition for it um it wasn't because he was seriously trying to break a record you know obviously if you're breaking a record by 10 times is that really a record in the first place was i mean the the record you brought before is that even is that even legitimate you know it's like um well you know i can you know can he go he can't go any further than that that's the farthest you could go he could couldn't he just fly any further no you know so the next hoverboard has to fly three miles or four miles you know until you get a plane that just flies around the earth it just doesn't make any sense as that to even be a record they already created a record for flyboard before you guys not might not know that but this isn't the first time that flyboard worked with guinness book of world records see you can see right there you know can i invite a judge okay um, yes, our record adjudicators travel the world to provide on-the-spot verification of record attempts, and you can hire a judge to attend your attempt. Inviting a Guinness World Judge uh, World Records adjudicator is a paid-for service. Okay, so you have to pay for them. Period. It's just it's like, and they are very very expensive. They're not. It's not. They're not a joke. I mean, so when people pay for a judge, it's because they want attention. Um, that's why. So like marketing you get it um you see the flyboard has already had to deal with guinness once before and guinness basically didn't do anything for him because i believe they didn't have the money to actually pay for it um if they were trying you know because they, they are so ridiculously expensive but they're such a huge marketing campaign so you can see right here i'll start it over so you can see what these guys are talking about this was an event that took place in america okay let's see here He's one of our favorites. He's the second place we North American. Woo! He's the second place North American flyboard champion. So he was up there on the podium with Damon Rippey. He's from he, Utah. He's from Utah, Ogden, Utah. He always sports the hat. He's, he's the battle, super buddy. talented. And one of his uh, fine moves is doing a cannonball from 40 feet in the air. As you can imagine, it probably doesn't feel the best nice. as long as well as played. He just th he met he that was for me. That's Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Bring us on the side. So it'll get louder and louder as the day progresses. We're going to be streaming from you guys for probably the next 30 minutes at least, and we're going to start to uh, try to get this thing going. Hopefully we're going to be right in the middle of everything, flyers all around here. And we couldn't actually get Guinness Book of World Records to attend. It wasn't a big enough event, but we're going to show video proof. We're going to submit it. They actually made a specific category just for us for this specific event, and so that's why I think a lot of people gather here to come hang out and have a great time. So as you can see, that's that was the case. The Re Guinness World Records wouldn't even come out for them, but probably because of money, they they set the record for the most flyboards in the air at one time. They just made up a category for them. So see, that's what they're willing to do. But all of it costs money. None of it is is you know free because it's marketing, it's advertising. Right here, advertising solutions with Guinness World Records live. Um, I mean, they this is just what they. It's just what they do, you guys. So it's like I, I can't take anything that they say seriously, but I am willing to uh, believe it if I could just get some answers to something because it's like I, I feel like um, I feel like, you know, we're getting played and I feel like we're getting played for fools. 
be, for a marketing campaign, which is it's no big deal. I mean, it's not like, you know, people are like, oh, it'll hurt their reputation. No, it won't. It'll help their reputation. Companies do it all the time. Samsung did it. Michael Bay did it. I mean, Microsoft does it. Everybody does it. So it's not it's not something that was going to destroy your company. I mean, you still use Microsoft. You still go and watch Transformers, right? And they have all done these fake viral campaigns and stuff. So, I mean, it's um, I just need something a little more to go on because at, as of right now, it just seems so... It just doesn't make any sense. It just, I just, I don't buy it, you know? I mean, I want to believe it because it looks so fucking neat. It looks so cool. Uh, but, I mean, I realized, you know, even on the, the scale for viral marketing, it, their scale isn't even that big, you know? Like, um, having a bunch of people come out is not a big, it's not a big deal. Having a bunch of people film stuff is, is not a big deal. I mean, it's um something that campaigns, it's a campaign. They, they do that all the time. It's, you know, I mean, it's not... It's nothing unusual. Um, it's not unheard of. And it's pretty normal in the marketing world. Um, but I mean, I just I want it to be real. So if someone can just answer those questions, the questions about like you know the the live the so-called live event. I know it wasn't live. It just I mean, why why have all this stuff in there that doesn't make any sense? Why have all this deceitful stuff? It does it doesn't it doesn't add up. I don't get it. I mean, why not just be serious about everything and say, hey, this is the deal, you know, he he um, he already came and landed once and we didn't show it to you. But instead he gets out in front of the camera and acts like, oh, hey, here he comes live. Yeah. But no, he didn't. I mean, did he? How do we know? We don't know the difference because it, it's like they already lied to, to begin with saying it was live when it wasn't. How did they run a live stream on Facebook if they don't have the application that allows you to do it? That doesn't make any sense. They have the you know, how, how does that happen? I, you know, it's just, it's just too much, but I'm willing to believe it. I really am. Um, but if, you know, I mean, someone just got to come so help me out. I mean, I know there's plenty of people out there who are fucking pissed at me for saying shit. And I, I completely understand because, um, you know, I debunk shit myself. If it's real, I want to be, I want to back up the truth. That's what matters. Okay. That's what's important is, and I have. I can admit that I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, well, then I'm wrong. And I come out as a man because I have honor and integrity. And I would say, I am wrong. I fucked up. I made a mistake. You guys are absolutely right. I fucking, you know, I, I, I just didn't know. I didn't have enough information. And I believed something that was, in fact, not the case. Uh, and I can do that. No problem. But I got to have something else to go on. Because all the, just like all the other website companies out there they're they're you know um following the story they all still question whether or not it's real well why why do we all question that why is everyone like us saying hey there's something up with this something's fishy so i mean i'm willing to go with it but someone i mean throw me a bone give me something tell me how that makes any kind of sense you know like how, i mean i don't understand it you know um there's like can't can't we get him to do like an actual like live, you know, can't he just, you know, come on Periscope or, or Skype live to somebody? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, you know, but uh, whatever. But all right, you guys. Thank you.